Investors are promising that the 2024 Muti Mile will be the best yet. The Muti Mile, the English-speaking Caribbean's richest horse race, was launched on Tuesday in Kingston. The Invitational Grade 1 event for native bred and imported three-year-olds and upward will be held on the 7th of December at Kimanas Park. Among the improvements announced is a significant increase in the overall purse, up from 150,000 US dollars in 2023 to 250,000 US dollars for the 2024 staging. A maximum 16 horses will face the starter, with 10 positions reserved for horses based in Jamaica before January 1, 2024. Well, winners of the Jamaica Derby, Jamaica Cup, Philip Fiani Gold Cup and Port Royal will gain automatic entry. Here's Gary Peart, Chairman of Supreme Ventures Limited. So Mute Mile 2024, December 7th, that's where everybody needs to be. 2023 was outstanding, we hit all of our objectives. For this year, there are several things that's going to be very exciting why you should be there. The first one is the theme. Wild Wild West is one of the few costume parties that has been doing very well over the years. Last year it was Kings and Queens and we had, it was a wonderful day for people who came out dressed in costume. There are not many places you can do to do it. So that's another reason to come on December 7th. Um, you know, so come as Lone Ranger, come as Indian, Squaw, come as Tonto, just carry some cowboy boots and a set, a set some hat and you, you fill right in. That's on the entertainment side. As it, as it matters to the horse racing, um, we've increased the number of entries, foreign entries to six this year. So what that's likely to do is to make the, the field significantly more competitive. And I think you'll have a great day because on that day we increase all the purses. So all 10 or 12 races are likely to be extremely competitive. And there is nothing like betting on a horse and seeing that horse head to head coming down the final furlong and you know that you have $1,000 on it with the ability to win 10000 That excitement, all I say to you, please don't jump up on the tables. <laughs> All right, rough entry, the imported thoroughbred, written by French-born jockey Julian Lacaroux, won the 2023 event and his team is looking for a repeat in 2024. The French, as you know, ramped the Mute Mile for 2023. And of course, we, we are here to defend. In fact, we have kept the horse here just to make sure it's fully acclimatized and we are coming back to defend, if not the winning horse, but certainly the winning stable. And we're really looking forward to it. Very excited about what we I heard this morning, and I know my partners will be. And of course, our involvement in horse racing spans more than Jamaica. As you might have been aware, we ran in the Fountain of Youth two Saturdays ago. We didn't do as well as we hoped, but we're hopeful that we can make a recovery. And certainly our objective, as you all can imagine, is the number one Kentucky Derby. But we give full support to whatever is happening to horse racing in Jamaica. All right, so the Mote Mile 2024, we're already beginning discussions about that and Lance last year was so good for me, my experience. It has been the third staging of the Mute Mile. I think I would have attended two. So the when last one and the one before. The one before would have Actually, been the... Actually, no, I been did the, the one before too. I had a white dress, so I remember... The one all. before would have been the Diamond Mile. Right, yeah. right, right. It was the Diamond Mile, yeah. yeah. So it has really been a great experience for me. Of course, we were there to work, so we were on um, presentation duties, lands. But I think the atmosphere when it comes to the Mute Mile is really pure royalty it's a lot of glitz and glamour but what i like about it as well is there is top class horse racing you get the best of the best and i think last year was a perfect example of that rough entry with julian laperu you know doing the business and this year we're in for a bigger prize money so i think even the quality of the racing lands we are to expect it's going to be a bigger a higher quality yeah, and last year we had two overseas riders in, um, Leperu from uh, the USA and uh, Kimura from Woodbine in Canada, a Japanese-born rider. And uh, I think with the, the, the growth of the event as a spectacle and the increase in prize money, there is every chance that 
more foreign um, personalities will be involved in, in the 2024 staging. Yeah. And it is significant to me that the organizers in March are already um, geeing up yeah. the, the fans for, for this December 7th event. And that tells you that they are pretty serious. I remember last year, because of how successful it was, there was a lot of pressure on Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited to have more events like this annually mm -hmm. and <laughs> not just have this one big event look for a year because they were saying it was such a fabulous outing that they're just the appetite to see it happening more than once per year was a, a, a narrative coming from a lot of the fans. But it's going to be very special, to be quite honest. I never thought in my lifetime that I would see a Caribbean horse race carrying a purse of 250,000 US dollars. That is massive. And that massive, speaks massive. Lance, to the investment yeah. and the willingness to invest in this quality. I think, you know, the product has created some sort of importance that people are willing to put their money now where this event is concerned. And that's a big win. Yeah, and you know what? Paul Moutet, who is the family, he, that, well, he, the Trini he, family. Yeah, the Trini <laughs> family that, that pumps the money into this, had wanted from the very first year to put the prize money up to this level. But Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited, from my investigations, had said just just start, you know, Let's more take it moderate. In yeah. And, 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 and go big the next year. I think we, when we had uh, Solomon Sharp here, he said that to us. Yes. You know, they wanted to start big from inception. That's but right. It was like, you know, no, we need to like gradually build up. Yeah. And I think we're finally here, Lance. And again, I'm just so happy. I think this is a product that I enjoy attending and of course working. And I know our viewers who have not attended would not want to miss out on the opportunity. On the horse racing side now, it's a 16-horse field. Yes. They said 10 would be local yes. horses and 6 can be imported. But of course, if that's not filled by the time, they're going to have Jamaican horses. Yeah. Um, last time, the, the, the interest in the event was significant because Rough Entry, the eventual winner, had shown some quality performances at Gulfstream Park before he arrived in Jamaica. So there was a lot of buzz surrounding him. And uh, one of the things about his his entry <laughs> was that um, he hadn't raced in Jamaica before so he had galloped well exercised well and was preparing well for the event but he hadn't raced in Jamaica before yeah so that created a little bit of doubt in some people's minds because they they are, they are fans who felt that the, the Jamaica racetrack would be different from racetracks in in the USA so there was a feeling that they were a little um, uncertain that rough entry would just transport the brilliant performances that we saw in the USA immediately to Caymanas Park without yeah. a sort of a warm-up run yes. here but he won by seven lengths and was was <laughs> unchallenged really and Atomica who was a race the reigning horse of the year fell lost the rider coming into the home turn and no one was able to travel to, to to trouble rough entry yeah. and um well you heard the owner just now dennis <laughs> smith saying that he didn't go back to the usa he has remained here didn't win his last race his first outing after the mute mile but i'm pretty certain that he'll be in good nick december and uh ready to defend his title and now the discussion will not be that he's new to the conditions instead no. he has now been conditioned lance i want to hear your thoughts on the automatic entry win and you're in uh, those qualifying from the Jamaica, those winning the Jamaica Derby, the Philip Fiani Odi Gold Cup, the Jamaica Cup, and of course the Port Royal Sprint will get automatic entry into the Mute Mile. Your thoughts on this approach? I think that's a good approach because um, it gives an opportunity for some of the horses who may not have gathered enough purse money to qualify to get in. And an easier opportunity to get in. I remember the owners of Mahogany, one of the top performers in Jamaica last year, um, felt as if that horse scuppered its own chances in the event itself by having to run so many races leading up to the Mute Mile because it needed to earn the level that would qualify it to be in. Yeah. And uh, the opportunity to ho for horses now to win the Derby, win the Gold Cup, win the Jamaica Cup, win the Port Royal Sprint, and immediately qualify, I think is a good thing. Because it just means that uh, some of the horses will not have to go through the, 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 the difficulty of uh, trying to race, 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 race to get earnings.
to qualify to run. So I think that's a very, very um, good approach by the organizer, Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited. Yeah, I know this was something that you were very happy about, very pleased about Andy Sealing, um, the horse racing commentator. I think, you know, he also added to the overall product of the um, Mute Mile. Do you think we'll have him this year or <laughs> do you think they're going to even... I don't know who else I could possibly think about that. But, what, what, one of the issues, though, with some of these races is that it, it comes at a time when a lot of these stars have commitments overseas as yeah. well. Um, I saw in Barbados last week, the Sandal in Barbados Gold Cup, Robert Geller, who is the race caller for Woodbine Racetrack in Canada. He was visiting <laughs> yeah. uh, and he worked one of the races as a guest commentator. But Woodbine is off. Woodbine doesn't restart. They're on winter break at the moment. Yes. They don't restart until April. So it was easy for him to come to the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. The first week in December is usually a busy week for a lot, a lot of um, horsemen, you know, riders and commentators and so on. So we'll have to see how things, things pan out because Pete Aiello had been here a couple of weeks before the Mute Mile for, the, for the Jamaica Cup and then he, he had to leave. And... Uh, the, one of the biggest meets in Gulfstream Park horse racing starts early December. So some of the riders and people involved in, in that championship meet, which is what they call it at Gulfstream Park, starts early December and runs through to March. Safi Joseph, the Barbadian trainer, is the current champion of that meet. Um, they'll be having commitments. So uh, we'll see how things pan out. But I can tell you, at 250000 US dollars, <laughs> there'll, there'll be a couple of overseas um, uh, thoroughbred uh, personalities. Well, there are six spots for them. Yeah, who, 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 who will think that? You know what? I have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar race in of Tampa Bay or or Gulfstream Park, and the Jamaica race is offering two hundred and fifty thousand. Gotta go. So let me let, let me head to to Saint Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's for sure is all the action will be December seven at the Mute Mile, and of course, viewers, we're going to be bringing you coverage. We're going to be doing our very best to, of course, have the build up as we continue to bring you the very best in the world of sport. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.